let us stand to our feet and lift our hands and lift our voices and praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise his wonderful name this morning. Hallelujah. Come on. He is our risen Savior. He is alive and he is in this place. We are blessed to be in his presence this morning. Oh, come on. If you love him, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give him praise. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, the name of Jesus is lifted high. In this place, amen, we rebuke the devil. We're going to give God some praise anyway. Come on, somebody make some noise for Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, if I am lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Last week, we celebrated his lifting on the cross. But today, we lift him with praise. Somebody declare his goodness in this place. Hallelujah. He's the only God. He is my Savior. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's good to see you this morning in the sanctuary, YouTube, Facebook. God bless you. The name of Jesus lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The name of Jesus lifted high in this place. You say the name of Jesus lifted, lifted high, high, lifted high, lifted high. The wonderful the name, name of Jesus lifted in this place. Say it again. The name of Jesus, say of Jesus, lift it high, lift it high, yes, lift it high. The name of Jesus, lift it in this place. Come on, if you believe it, clap your hands and say, Oh, 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 in this place. Celebrate Jesus. Clap your hands and say, Oh, 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 in this place. Here's what I believe. Our sons and daughters shall be saved, shall be saved, shall be saved. Husbands and wives, aunts and uncles, everybody in this place, you say, Sons and daughters, shall be saved. Sons and daughters, in this place, say it again. Sons and daughters shall, shall be saved. Come on, you want to lift up your family members.
The sound of revival arising. I hear the sound of revival arising. I hear the sound of revival arising in this place. Come on, everybody say it. I hear it. I hear the sound. I hear the sound of revival. Yeah. <laughs> 
Come on, let's clap our hands for the God of the Bible. We can do better than that. We just came off a great celebration weekend last weekend. He's still alive. Hallelujah. We honor the God of the Bible. He is the first and the last. We give honor to our bishop and our pastor, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. And First Lady Pamela Wooden, let's clap our hands for her. And to our first, second, and third assistants, Elder Amon Chuku, Elder Wilson, and Elder Williams, and all these quorum of elders. And to our jurisdictional mother, Mother Dijanae. Let's clap our hands for her. And to our district missionary moles. Let's clap our hands for her as well. And to all our evangelist missionaries, we thank God for you. And to our mother's board, we thank God for Mother Williams and all the mothers. Have you greeted your neighbor on this morning? I know you greeted them. But we're going to greet them one more time. And to our Facebook and YouTube live audience, we thank God for you as well. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, get ready, because Bishop got something for us today. I feel a two-step that's going to happen. It, it, it's... I'm telling you, Bishop is going to say something today. Only, o only the ones that come on 8 o'clock that do, do understand what I'm talking about right here. We are going to move ahead with our service. We have prayer by Elder Daughtry Miller, Old Testament scripture by Evangelist Crystal Armachuku, New Testament by Elder Jamel Williams, Statement of Faith by Evangelist Marlene White, followed by the hymn by the Upper Room Praise Team, followed by our welcome address by Sister Joanna McCoy. Let's, let's receive them at this time. My soul loves, loves Jesus. My soul loves My soul, my soul loves Jesus. I bless his name. My soul loves Jesus. My soul, my soul loves Jesus. privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Kind Father God, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we approach our throne of grace. Oh God, we come in humility. We come in thanksgiving. God, we thank you for this day that, oh God, that you allowed us to behold the dawning of this new day. You said this is the day that you have made. You said for us to rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, we thank you. Thank you for the privilege that we have, oh God, knowing, oh God, that you are our risen Lord. 
You are our risen Savior. You declared, I am he that was dead, but am alive forevermore. And God, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you because it is through you, Jesus, that we have salvation. We can rejoice in you. We have hope today. Oh, God, because of what you've done on the cross. You died for our sins, not for mine, but only but the sins of the whole world. And we say thank you. God, we thank you for this fellowship that we have. We thank you for the peace that you've given us. Thank you for the joy, oh God, that you've given us. And we rejoice in the God of our salvation. Oh God, we just want to say thank you. God, we thank you for our man of God, Bishop Patrick Lane Wood Sr., First Lady. Oh God, we pray for them. Pray, oh, thank you, G. Hey, glory to God. Pray for their home, their family. They're going out, they're coming in. All of the travel that our bishop do. God, we thank you. Because it is you that take him and it is you that bring him. Oh, God, I pray that you would look on, God. Look on this vineyard. Oh, God, look on this house. Look on this people. In the name of Jesus and all of those members, oh, God, that's watching now. I pray for them. I pray for their home. I pray for their family. I pray for their well-being. In the name of Jesus. God, I pray for, for every facet of the ministry. Oh, God, there's a lot of work in parts. But God, without you, nothing would happen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And God, we thank you because you have anointed us, oh, God. You have appointed God. You've made ways. You've opened doors. God, we thank you for the gospel going out everywhere. In the name of Jesus, your servant, oh God. Hey, thank you, Jesus. That's not a shame of the gospel of Christ. Your servant, oh God, that would preach the unadulterated gospel. Your servant, oh God, that stand on the wall and he won't come down because he's a doing he's doing a good work. And we thank you for him. Oh God, I pray now, oh God, for the fathers of the servant. Oh, oh, thank you that, hey, glory, that all will be done for your glory and for your honor and for your praise. Oh, God, have your way now. Oh, look on the sick everywhere. God, send your word and heal. Oh, God, look on bereaved families. God, comfort like only you can do. Hey, glory to God, and we thank you for it. And we praise and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Our Old Testament scripture reading will come from Psalm 18, 1 through 3. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. I'll be coming from Romans, the 8th chapter, the 37th through the 39th verse. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is also in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please direct your attention to the monitors for the reading of the statement of faith. Our belief concerning the Bible. We believe the Bible to be the inspired and infallible word of God. Our belief concerning God. Our belief concerning the church. We believe in the blessed hope, which is the rapture of the church of God, which is the Christ that is the church. Our belief concerning sin. Our belief concerning salvation.
our belief concerning Christ. Our belief concerning the Holy Ghost. Our belief concerning sanctification. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like me. Everybody, come on, let's sing. our viewing audiences and our listening audience and our streaming audience. Good morning to everyone. It is the day that the Lord has made and we're here to rejoice and be glad in it. And we stand at this time to welcome all of our visitors and guests. If you are worshiping at the Upper Room for the first time or if you just stopped by to visit with us this morning, we ask that all visitors would stand now. Visitors? Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. So glad to see each one of you. God bless you. Please remain standing. On behalf of our pastor, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr., First Lady Pamela Wooden, and the entire Upper Room Church family, welcome to the service of the Lord. We are so glad that you chose the Upper Room for your worship experience today. Our ushers are approaching you now to pass out visitors' cards. We would like for you to complete those and then return them during the offering. Attached to the visitor's card is a name tag that we would like for you to complete and to wear so that our members may greet you properly today. We are so glad that you are here. If you have any needs during our service, we have hospitality workers standing at the back doors with black dresses and yellow flowers. They'd be very eager to assist you with any needs you may have this morning. Again, we're glad you're here and there is a word from the Lord that shall come forth with power and authority. We pray you would hear and receive from the Lord this morning. He has something special in store just for you. We at Upper Room are reclaiming God's rainbow. We believe that the rainbow belongs to the church. The seven colored rainbow is the one that God promised us in the opening book of the Bible that he would not flood the earth again with water. And the emerald green rainbow is the one that he promised us in the closing book of the Bible that we will see around about the throne when we get to heaven. We're the saints of God. We believe in the things of God and the rainbow belongs to the church. Visitors, we're so glad that you are with us this morning. We also acknowledge the presence of the visitors during our 8 a.m. service. And Upper Room Church family, if you would stand with me now, we're so glad to have visitors with us today. Please greet our visitors warmly. Visitors, we welcome you today. We are now going to have greetings from our First Lady, 
First Lady Pamela Wooden, followed by announcements by Evangelist Patricia Lester, followed by a musical selection from our Upper Room Praise Team, followed by the presentation of our pastor from Elder Anthony Maurice Wilson. Praise the Lord. Clap your hands for the Lord Jesus and give God a mighty praise in the sanctuary. One more time that the Lord has allowed us to come together. And I'm so glad that he has. I do give praise, glory, and honor to the God of the Bible. And I certainly do honor our great pastor and leader, our man of God. We thank God for him. Amen. To these very fine elders, his assistants. Uh, Elder Amanchukwu, Wilson, and Williams. God bless all three of you all. Amen. And to, yes, to Elder Wright, God bless you. And to all of the elders, um, to our beautiful women of God. Amen. God bless you, Mother Dijanae, District, District Missionary Mother Mose. Amen. <laughs> and to our um, evangelist women of God, to our mothers, members, saints, and friends, God bless you all. I'm just super excited about what the Lord is doing in these last and evil days. I'm just glad to be a part of what God is doing. Amen. Uh, I, want, I want some stars in my crown when I get to glory. Praise the Lord. And for that cause, I give and I do all I can uh, in the work of the Lord. Uh, I heard the pastor say, I think it was Thursday night, how... Um, <clears throat> God, Jesus said, blessed when he come, those that when he come, he find those so doing. And I thank God that for the great commission that he has given us and our pastor has reminded us that God has commissioned us to do something. Praise God. To go forth. And I just thank God for just that, that reminder and that new inspiration to go forth and to do the things of God. Amen. We are on the precipice of NC 3rd 7th Ministers and Workers Conference. It's starting right here on Wednesday night. And I just want to encourage you, the saints of God, uh, to make it your business to be a part of this conference. Um, Thursday, all day, is Women's Day. Praise the Lord. We have been blessed to have Women's Day all day. And I tell you, our very own supervisor and mother, Beverly Dijanae, will be speaking uh, during the day sessions, amen. She has a very special guest that's coming uh, on uh, Thursday night, uh, Mother Butts. I tell you, she's a woman of God that's full of grace, full of wisdom, uh, so anointed in her delivery of the Word of God. And I want you to know that you will be blessed by coming and hearing uh, this woman, these women of God. And we know on Friday night our pastor is going to bring it on home. We've been praying and asking God to send revival to the Ministers and Workers Conference. And we believe that he is going to do just that. Um, I'm so looking forward to the word of God. I've, um, coming in the door, people were talking about the service. And I tell you, I'm looking forward to what God has to say. I tell, when I come to church, my ears are open. I'm just, there's something, you know, when I come into service, I'm, there's so much expectation. Lord, this just might be the day that this might happen. And so this just might be your day. So I encourage you to give God glory. Don't just be a spectator, but be a participator in the service of the Lord, for you will get out of it what you put in it. Prepare your hearts now to hear and to receive the word of the Lord. God bless you. This week at Upper Room, all Tuesday night services and activities have been canceled for this week in preparation for the NC Third Workers Meeting. The Upper Room Youth Department wants to acknowledge and celebrate the class of 2023 high school graduates. Please take a moment to send an email to gn at powooden.org. We look forward to celebrating this major milestone with you. Presiding Bishop J. Drew Shear, Department Directors and Conference Chairman Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and Bishop Michael B. Golden Jr. invite you to attend the National Men Perfecting Men Conference. It is urgent for every man to meet in Jackson, Mississippi, May 9th through the 11th 
for a premier conference for the men of the church. Get ready for three explosive days of praise, power, and purpose through prayer, dynamic teaching, powerful preaching, special presentations, training, development, and more. There will also be special sessions for women. Registration is open at the URL on the screen, so don't wait. Register today. Married couples are invited to join First Lady Pamela Wooden for the next marriage class to be held Sunday, April 23rd at 9.45 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. The discussion from the Marriage Ministry survey questions will continue, so come and hear how to strengthen your marriage the more in 2023. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. If you are in or visiting the Raleigh area and looking for an opportunity to gather with the saints for a God first experience, the Upper Room is pleased to offer two services every Sunday morning. Join us at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. for Sunday worship service in the sanctuary. You can also join the Upper Room Church of God in Christ every Sunday at 11 a.m. and Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. for the live stream of our services on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. will bring a fresh word from the Lord relevant to our times and equip you to contend for the faith. Thank you to our viewers throughout the United States and abroad for your weekly support of our broadcast. Please be reminded there are several ways to give to the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. For online giving, please visit easytithe.com forward slash URC. Also, please use only one email address for each Easy Tithe account so we can properly track your giving. Within Easy Tithe, you can now initiate the Recur option, which allows you to select a designated amount to be automatically deducted from your account. You may also visit our website, upperroomgospel.org, and select the Giving tab. Or you can mail your gift to the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, Post Office Box 447, Garner, North Carolina, 27529. As always, thank you very much for supporting the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. The men and women of North Carolina Third will travel to Asheville, North Carolina to defend the truth of the God of the Bible. Travel with jurisdictional prelate Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. as we stand shoulder to shoulder in support of our second administrative assistant, Superintendent Ronald Gates. America has over 72 man-made genders, but according to Genesis 1 and 27, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female, created he them. Join the fight with us Friday, April 28th at 7.30 p.m. at Greater Works Church of God in Christ, located at 25 Forsyth Street in Asheville. Everyone is invited to attend the Timeless and Unbowed Awards Ceremony to be held Friday, May 5th at 11.30 a.m. Get ready for a luncheon at Briar Creek Country Club, located at 9400 Club Hill Drive in Raleigh. Among the honorees will be our very own First Lady Pamela Wooden. Each honoree has demonstrated accomplishments in service, education, training, or outreach with a broad influence in the community, public or private sectors, church or state. Early bird registration is now open and tickets can be purchased at politeplanning.com. Limited tickets will be available at the door, so make plans now to support the jewel of the ministry. We're getting ready for North Carolina Third's seventh Ministers and Workers Meeting, Strength, to be held Wednesday, April 19th through Friday, April 21st. We'll start each day at 9.30 a.m. with prayer, and this year will also include a leadership forum, Strengthening the Whole Man, hosted by our jurisdictional prelate, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr., to be held Wednesday and Friday after prayer. These sessions are open to everyone and will include a Q&A segment certain to strengthen your role as a leader. We will also be blessed by teachings from Elder Anthony Robinson and Pastor John Burnside. Bishop Wooden is asking all title holders and those who serve in a capacity of the jurisdiction to be present. Join us Wednesday evening to hear a powerful word from Bishop Michael J. Payton Sr., jurisdictional prelate of Metro Georgia Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Thursday is Women's Day, and our jurisdictional supervisor, Beverly DeJanay, will be the speaker during the day service, while Elder Anthony Wilson, chairman of the men's department, hosts the Acts 6 and 3 men's session. Thursday evening, we're pleased to welcome Emeritus Supervisor Mother Thelma Butts from Ohio North, first ecclesiastical jurisdiction for our speaker. The week will conclude with the mighty word from our jurisdictional prelate, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. Registration through Constant Contact is free and fully underway. We encourage you to register for the day sessions only, as it is helpful in assuring our numbers for the complimentary lunches. Make plans now to receive strength in our seventh Ministers and Workers Meeting. Please govern yourselves accordingly with this week's announcements.
No announcements. We are excited and gearing up for our seventh ministers and workers meeting to be held on April 19th through the 21st. In preparation of the gathering of the saints, the upper room administration and the NC third chief adjutant are in need of male and female volunteers. Everyone is asked to arrive at 6 p.m. on tomorrow, April 17th. As always, we appreciate your labor of love and your service to the ministry. We want to encourage everyone to purchase tickets for the Timeless and Unbowed Award Luncheon honoring First Lady Pamela Wooden by Monday, amen, April 17th. Please visit politeplanning.com. This concludes this morning's announcements. Thank you for your attention. As we prepare our hearts and our minds for the word of God, to not only hear it preached, but to receive the word. The man of God was preaching about the perfect peace of God. Now, one thing I got out of it, to steal from my big younger brother, Elder Amachuku, one wooden nugget out of that was that peace is not the absence of trouble, trials, and situations, but it is the strength to endure through. And somebody in the sanctuary, those of you on Facebook and YouTube, whatever you're facing, especially those of you who believe in Christ, he gives those who keeps their mind stayed on him perfect peace. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Perfect peace. All whose minds stayed on me. If you believe it this morning, thou will keep him in. Stay. 
keeping me. Thank you for keeping my mind. Thank you for keeping my body. Thank you for keeping my family. Yeah! Oh, hallelujah. Will you help me honor the sovereign God, the God of the Bible, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this morning. Give him praise, glory, and honor, for he indeed is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he's worthy. Oh, the residue from this morning is yet in the sanctuary. I would like to petition and request that everyone join us in resting on our feet all over the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Saints and friends, receive this giant in the gospel so we can hear from the Lord, Bishop Patrick Lane Wooden Sr. Hallelujah. Dear God of the Bible, God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the first and the last, the beginning and the ending, God who was, God who is, God who is to come, he who is alive and was dead, never to die again, only wise potent. King of kings, Lord of lords. Our Savior, we thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for being so good. And thank you, Lord, for, br for bringing us to this place. Mm. To this place, to this location, but more importantly, Lord, to this place in human history. Father, we realize that the battle is on, but you're God. And there ain't nobody like you. And we're glad today to be on the Lord's side. Uh, so, Father, I ask that you would bless us and keep us and Speak, O oh God, one more time. And if you do, we will hear your voice and we will give you all of the praise and all of the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you give the God of the Bible praises once more? Amen. You have certainly praised him this morning. and I'm grateful that he is the keeper of our souls. Amen. You might be seated in the presence of the Lord. I tell you, God has brought us from a long way. And he's blessed us and kept us and been there for us down through the years, hasn't he? Come on, Rocky, let's sing down through the years. Just a little bit of that. Down through the years. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Down through the years The Lord's been good to me Singing down, down through the years Can I get a witness? The Lord's been good to me Down through the years Oh, the Lord's been good to me Who can say all of my life? God has been good to me, singing all of my life. The Lord has been good, singing all of my life. Well, the Lord. 
know the Lord. Oh, Lord, to me. Can I testify? I know I've got religion. I didn't get it in a dream. Wait me, shake me in the midnight hour. I'll tell you just what I've seen. Oh, Lord, now down through the years. Lord, do I have a witness who can say down? God Almighty. Pray to pray one day. I said this to God. Help me, Jesus. Help me. Help me if you please. If you can't help me standing up, I'll bow down on my knees. Down, down through the years. Lord. Somebody wave both hands. Say down the, the Lord has been Them instruments because when you start thinking about how good God has been when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me I have to say he's been good
rockety band. I got, we got to fight now. Praise the Lord. Got our praise in. Let's honor God. <laughs> Woo! I'm happy in Jesus. Thank you, sir. I'm glad that I'm born again. I'm glad that I'm washed in the blood. And I'm glad that I'm on the Lord's side. I'm glad that I'm not doubting about the way. I'm glad that I know that holiness is right. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. How many are glad that you're on the Lord's side today? Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Uh, I don't apologize for being saved and uh, having the joy of the Lord. Amen. Uh, I honor my first assistant, Elder John Amanchuku. And uh, to our second assistant, Elder Anthony Wilson. I praise the Lord for our third assistant, Elder Robert Williams. These three men are, are working together wonderfully to help me get the work of God done. And they are very, very necessary to the cause of Christ. I want to praise God to date for all the elders and ministers. And, amen. Thank God for our administrator, Evangelist Lester. Amen. Got in a different place today. And uh, to our wonderful supervisor, Mother Beverly DeJanae. My mama talked about you yesterday. And I went to see her and she was telling her mother how you walked up to her and just touched her and looked her in the eye and told her how glad you were to see her. And it, it just blessed her. Uh, real good and um, the evangelist she was talking to me about evangelist uh, Douglas that's a preaching young lady amen I don't know if she's here today she may have been in the 8 o'clock service uh, God is certainly using her and you never know the effect that you're having on people God bless our district missionary district missionary Mose and um, I want to praise the Lord for uh, our mother's board and Mother Williams and the work of the board. And uh, we're just keeping her lifted up. And mother's board, I'll be meeting with you shortly and talk some things uh, over with you. Our mothers are blessed and I'm grateful to God for them. To all of you, our Heavenly Father's children, to our, the saints who have joined us today, who are streaming and watching, we praise God for you. And I certainly praise the Lord for my lovely wife, the First Lady, a man of the Upper Room, Church of God in Christ. Pamela, I told them we were at an occasion on Friday night. I said, she's, uh, we've been together for 42 years tell you she is a blessing indeed from the Lord and to all of you who are gathered here today welcome to week 152 of the upper room being back in live services and the overwhelming majority of these live services have been uh, we've gone from one service on Sunday to two and God has watched over us. God has kept us. He's kept us alive. I keep count because it's one of the ways I give honor to God. Because the enemy said that we were going to die when we came back in. After the governor was overturned, we were one of the first churches. It may have been the only church, but we were one of the first to go back in that day. I'm talking about the, he was overturned on a Saturday. We were in church the next day. Amen. The next day. And we've been here ever since. Amen. 
there are still some churches that you have to, a mask is required before you could enter, enter, can enter the church. Required. We always left that optional. That's up to the person. And uh, we took temperature checks and things like that. And we asked saints that if you thought you had COVID, dreamed you had COVID, <laughs> whatever, be kind and just stay home. Get well and come on back. Told the saints, if you take the shot, that's your business. If you decide not to, that's your business. I did not line up with pastors who got on uh, YouTube and other places and took the shot, demonstrating it to their members. Um, I didn't do that for, for simple reasons. Number one, I didn't know enough about it. Number two, I'm not going to ever represent a company that has no liability. They're saying to me, put this in your body, but if it goes wrong, you can't sue me. Just trust me. And I don't get but one of these in life. I said, no, sir. And uh, I, talk, I talk more about it now because it's over, but I, I never got a shot. I never took a vaccine. I never did any of that. And uh, as you can see, I'm alive and well. Amen. And I feel good. Got up this morning and got my push-ups in. Getting ready to come to church. I preach twice on Sundays, on Thursday nights, and I feel good. I'm 61 going on 41. I feel good. God is good. God is good. And worthy to be praised. I didn't ask anybody. I didn't ask my daughter. I didn't ask my son-in-law. I didn't ask anybody about their status. The only person I asked was my mother. Mama, are you going to um, take that shot, get that vaccine? Before I could get it out of my mouth, my mother said, no. She didn't say no. My mom said, no! <laughs> so I've been says, son, I'm, um, at the time, I'm 86 years old, and God has kept me. So I didn't think that I would live to be 24, and God have brought me to where I am. She said, I think I'll just go on with God. And I said, Mother, I'm with you 100%. And here we are. We are. Week 152. Celebrating Jesus. And having a good time. We're saved and enjoying the trip. Uh, I have quite a few things that I want to share with you today. And, uh, and God is going to bless us. And I'll announce some of this stuff later on. I want you to turn your attention to the word of God. Our friends who are streaming, God bless you. Friends and members. Sometimes I say friends, but I, I, I omit our members. We have wonderful members online who are faithful. Some of them are more faithful than members in person. <laughs> they never miss an opportunity to support and stand by the church. And I'm thankful to God for that. Um, St. John's Gospel, chapter number 14. And the way we got into this Thursday night, we were talking about all the things that took place in those 50 days between when our Lord was resurrected and our Lord's ascension. But our text is a text that takes place on the eve of our Lord being shammed. It was a show trial. It wasn't a real trial. The trial that Jesus was in, everything they did was illegal. And, and by the way, to defend the Hosanna crowd, the crowd that said crucify him 
was not the same crowd that said Hosanna. The Hosanna crowd was tens of thousands. Could have been 100,000 people who lined the streets on both sides of Jerusalem cheering Jesus on Palm Sunday. The multitude that said let him be crucified was about 50 in a kangaroo illegal court setting held at night. The Hosanna crowd was asleep. I like to do that because uh, I think they need defending. We're giving them a bad name. The same ones who said Hosanna a week later said uh, crucify him. That's not, that's, not, that's not true. You do your homework and you'll see that I'm telling you the truth. John's Gospel, chapter number 14, verse 25 through 31. I'm so excited today. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father shall send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said, I go to my father. For my father is greater than I. And now, I have told you before it come to pass, that when it comes, when it come to pass, you might believe. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father giveth me commandment, that is, whatever the Father tells me to do, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. For your consideration, the second clause, B clause of verse number 30. For the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. The prince of this world is the devil. For the prince of this world cometh. I won't, I won't talk too much more to you about this because the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. I want to preach today from this subject and I have a thought that I want to leave with you. Satan, you have nothing in Christ. thought I wish to leave is simply this. Things are not always what they seem. Things are not always what they seem. Um, before I go into the message, I, something I failed to do that has nothing to do with the message at all, but I want to do it at this time. 
I was contacted by this wonderful missionary the other day, and she said to me, Bishop, I have been proposed to, and I have accepted the proposal. And I want to let you know, and I uh, gave her a call and met with her and her intendant, the young man who put the ring on her finger. And they're here today, and uh, I'm excited about announcing their engagement. I'm going to ask Missionary Manzella Hicks to please stand. They're watching you all over the country. This year. <laughs> and I'm going to ask the man who set all of this in motion, our own elder brother, Ronnie Sawyer. Would you please stand, sir? They are engaged. Congratulations. I met with them and just had a wonderful talk and we bid you Godspeed and we praise God for them. Amen. See, love finds you. See, that goes to show. You just hold on. Wait on the Lord. So, <laughs> some of the ladies throw their hands up. Say, oh. Amen. You just, you just never know. How you doing, Coach? Good to see you, man. Love is in the air, and, and we're grateful. And uh, the wedding date is the June the 17th, 2023. <laughs> Just so you know. And sorry, we ain't going to 20, in the 24 hours. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I, I am happy for them. Now, let's go. I, I want to I show you something. Um, and and, and uh, I, I want this released. There are tremendous cultural battles going on. And where you are spiritually, and I'm going to preach to you in just a minute determines how you view things. The spirit-filled and the sanctified and those who are connected to God sees things one way. The lost, the carnal, and many times yet well-intended and born again who are not spirit-filled see things another way. One of the challenges we have up a room as a church is that this church has been involved in cultural wars for decades. And yet many churches haven't been involved in cultural wars at all. Especially African American churches. The only cultural battle we seem to feel that's worth fighting is if we think an issue is an issue of race. Then here we come. But the other things we seem to Omit altogether. So there's a lot of good people who love the Lord, but their pastors, you know, the main that the main sermon is dealing with, you know, getting blessed, getting healed, overcoming your haters, or getting whatever you want from the Lord. Uh, creature comforts, new house, new car, you know, that kind of a thing. You're going to be a millionaire, you know, stuff like that. And some who get truly saved and sanctified, they get truly saved and sanctified to go to heaven, but they're not reminded that we have battles here that we must fight. So when you see people who have been involved in cultural wars fight the cultural battles, if you're part of a congregation where the preacher doesn't talk about stuff like that at all, then you don't know how to view it. And many times you end up siding with the enemy. The Bible says this in uh, 
2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. It says, but the natural man received not the things of the spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Elam and Chuku, because they are spiritually discerned. Some things you need the Holy Ghost to recognize. Where am I headed? There's a big uproar online about uh, what took place a few days ago at uh, uh, Lego store. Uh, my son-in-law, and, and I'm not doing this because he's my son-in-law. Um, I want to speak up because I agree, and he's right. I know what it's like to fight cultural battles, and there are those who may agree with you in private. That sometimes I've had a preacher to call me. The man was whispering on the phone. <laughs> Is this Pastor Woodness? Yeah, man. How you doing, Doc? Man, I'm doing all right. I just want you to know we agree with you. And you keep saying what you're saying. I said, oh, God. I said, okay, Doc. <laughs> but I don't want to be nuanced. I don't want to equivocate. I want you to know where I stand on what he did. First of all, I think it was a stroke of genius to have the presence of mind to pull out your cell phone. When you're 6'4", 280 pounds, built like a Greek god, black man, strong as a bull, you need a phone. Because you can get accused of anything. And sometimes it's hard to disprove yourself. Next thing you know, somebody say, well, he struck me, or he assaulted me, or he grabbed me. All right, because we've seen that happen before. Woman jogging in the park, and the man, the brother way on the other side, and she called the police screaming and hollering, saying that he's accosting her, but she didn't know somebody was taping the whole thing. And the man hadn't even come anywhere near her. He had just been to Lego about 30 days ago and bought some products, some toys for his children. He proud father of three, three grandbabies, and married to my lovely daughter. That pretty girl you all see me talk to every Sunday when I come in standing up on the praise team, that's my daughter. Chris, raise your hand. Not everybody knows so that's my daughter. Say amen. So why he's always talking to that one? That's my daughter. And... Uh, I can't hardly be close to it and not strike up a conversation. I think she's a fantastic young lady. She's Pam's daughter, too. <laughs> amen. Uh, I heard my wife say amen. I guess that amen like, include me. <laughs> but he was there to, went back to the store with his family. All of them were there. And when he went in the store, he noticed something that wasn't present the last time. All the employees were wearing this LBGTQ plus A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the alphabet. Every time you turn around, it keeps growing. Badgers in a store that caters to children. I'm going to show you in a minute. The young man he was talking to had his half fixed. A bang like a woman. Fellas don't wear their hair like that. White guys don't wear their hair like that. Some of my best friends are white. They don't wear their hair like that. Look at Coach Stewart. See how he got his hair? I love him. Got his hair fixed just like a man. This guy had his hair all fixed. And, uh, and the elder, with the presence of mind, that's probably why he's not in jail, to turn on, to tape the thing, talk to them. Now, depending upon where you are spiritually, 
That will determine what you see. I want you to play a little bit of the tape. I won't go through the whole thing, but I just want to put it, because it's out there, and you've probably seen it. If you haven't, I don't know where you've been. All right. I was trying to tell my mom about it. She said, I saw it. Support what? Yeah, the Lenny Group Pride and support the LGBTQ community. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But the question is, why are you all in here with those pins on? Do you think children care about what man sucks at home and what girl eats vaginas at home? I believe, man. Do you think they care about it's that? It's time to leave, man. Do, I mean, do, do you think they I care? I don't think they think about that personally. Right, so why would you, so, so they, they think about it when they see your pen. No, they don't. Yes, they do. It's, it's disgusting. That's all okay. grooming. All right, could y'all mind leaving? Yeah, if you call security, tell security that you're, that you're in here. All right, all right, uh, all right. Really? stop right there. Sure. Let me tell you what they did. They called security, and my heart went out to the security man because he, he didn't want to be there. Little bitty fellow. And, uh, but John is a Christian. He has the Holy Ghost. And security told him, says, man, you got to leave. He says, I'll leave. But then he made an announcement. He told the parents that these people, they got all this LBGT stuff, Q, they are indoctrinating our children. And uh, it's everywhere. There are those online who saw that, who said that Elder Amanchuku attacked Lego. And that's one point of view. But that's the carnal point of view. That's the natural man point of view. The spiritual man because, you know, I said these things are spiritually discerned, recognized that he was responding to Lego's attack on our children and on our parents and on families. Because Lego decided that they would come out with a homosexual alphabet, that they would have transgenders working in the stores that they would market not Lego but homosexuality to children. They launched the attack. He responded to their attack. When I saw what he did I said what if all fathers would do that. Do you not know that Lego would change their policy overnight? For those who who are washed in the blood who attack the preacher for telling the truth if Elder Manchukwu is guilty of attacking Lego then John the Baptist was guilty of attacking Herod because John told Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Am I in the book? That's what he told him. That's what he told him. Now, now, Herod, Herod, didn't make a great big announcement. He just took his brother Philip's wife. And, oh, and by the way, Philip wasn't dead. Herod went and visited Philip, saw Philip's wife, and decided he wanted her. And took the one. What kind of woman would leave, go from one brother to another? What, what brother would want his brother's wife? An immoral man. A man who had the morals of Lego. And let me tell you something. These corporations, they don't care about your children. They don't care about your sons. They don't care about your daughters. They only care about the bottom line. This man stood for children. This man stood for family. Uh, come here, I want to see you. Come, because they, because they, got, they, they got me in the shot. Come on, John. Stood for children, and he stood for families. Yes, and upper room, he will not stand alone. Thank you. Now, he'll stand alone. Because he knows no fear, but he ain't got to. Because I'm with it 
hundred percent. He's right. He's right. I want to say to the church world out there, it's time for all of us to make a stand. What if, what if just, just more of us would do that? Now, y'all know what I started to do. I told Elder Amon Chukwu, I started, but I felt, I felt I, would, I would play into the devil's hand. But I almost did it. Because I saw some, there's some other convicted people out there. I, 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 I can't join them, but, but I, I like that conviction. I started to, on my way to church today, just stop by a convenience store and just get me a, a, a Budweiser. Just get me a can, just one can. And bring it and sit it right here. Because one thing about them Budweiser people, you, Budweiser put a transgender on the cover of Bud. The Budweiser people stopped buying the beer. The people said, if you're going to do that, we are not going to buy your beer. I bet they won't do that again. I bet they won't do it anymore. Now, it's just tongue in cheek. I didn't actually stop, think to buy beer. But you get my point. They seem, the world seemed to have more conviction than the church. The beer drinker has more conviction than the sanctified preacher, than the bishop, than the superintendents, than the singers, than all of those who say nothing about these things. I got a question to ask. Where is your righteous indignation? I read this, and I'm going to the text. Amen. But James A. Garfield said this. Now more than ever, the people are responsible for the character of their Congress. If that body be ignorant, reckless, and corrupt, it is because the people tolerate ignorance, recklessness, and corruption. If it be intelligent, brave, and pure, it is because the people demand these high qualities to represent them in the national legislature. If the next centennial does not find us a great nation, it will be because those who represent the enterprise, the culture, and the morality of the nation do not aid in controlling the political forces. He's right. If we, as we sit and say nothing and do nothing, our country is getting messed up. But if we demand it, if we demand holiness, then we will get holiness and righteousness. Jeremiah said this in Jeremiah 5 and 30, 5, 30 and 31. He said, a wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their name, by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? Many seem to love this corruption. I thank God for, for a father, a man of God, a preacher, an elder, a proud member of this church who I'm proud to call my first assistant making a stand for the kingdom of God. I'm proud of him. Amen. I think it was the right thing to do. Amen. Uh, and may God continue to keep and bless you as you stand for Jesus and declare God's truth. Amen. Saints, don't get on the wrong side of God. Amen. For the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. John 14, 30, the B clause. Satan, you have nothing in Christ. Our text today is a powerful discourse, a powerful conversation that took place between our Lord Jesus Christ 
and his disciples while they were in the upper room. Now, they weren't in the upper room, Church of God in Christ, obviously. But they were in the upper room. And uh, he's in the upper room now. Because I, I know he is because I brought him with me. And uh, you brought him with you. Luke 22, verse 12 through 13 says, and I'll just read this to you. I'm, I'm establishing their location. And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. As he sent his disciples into town, he says, there make ready. You'll find a man carrying a water pot. He'll show you a large upper room furnished. And they went and found as he said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. Mark's Gospel chapter 14 verse 15 through 17 says, and he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. And his disciples went forth, and they came into the city and found as he had said unto them. And they made ready the Passover. Now listen to this. Two things you got, I want you to let stick in your mind. In the evening, he cometh with the twelve. So it was evening time when Jesus and the twelve went into Jerusalem after he had sent some disciples ahead to find the upper room. And that evening they went in to prepare the Passover, which Jesus knew going in it would be his last Passover. For the Passover lamb that would end all Passover observances was about to take place, was about to die, and that's Christ himself. And he would institute a new meal. As believers, we do not uh, consume the Passover meal. Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you. This is my blood, which is shed for you. The new meal was the communion. An interesting note is that Jesus, as I have mentioned in Mark 14 and 17, went in that evening, now follow me, with the twelve. Twelve, all twelve of his disciples went in. And in John chapter 14, verse 31, which is our text, the very last clause, Jesus said, Arise and let us go hence. They left the upper room. But an interesting thing here today to our friends who are streaming is that 12 disciples went in and only 11 left with him. Amen. I want to be amongst the ones who remain when Jesus comes. Or when I die, I want to die in Christ. I don't know what has happened become of many of the preachers who was ordained the same year that I was. But I'm glad that all these years later I'm still here in the church in Christ. I thank God. Twelve went in. Eleven came out. And uh, Jesus 
did everything he could to prevent the one who lost out from losing out. Jesus loved his disciples. Jesus loved them. Jesus loved Judas. Amen. And Jesus did everything that he could to get Judas to change his plans. I want that to kind of sink in. He didn't want Judas to carry out the evil plan, so he tried to stop him. Verse 21 of John chapter 13. I know you have your Bibles. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit. Now we see our Lord here troubled. Heavy. He was grieved. What troubled you, Lord? What did the Lord say that troubled him? He said in verse 18, I speak not of, of you all. But I know whom I have chosen. But that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me have lifted up his heel against me. He said, not all of you, but one of you in my inner circle. Close to me. The 12 was close to Jesus. One of you have lifted up your soul against me. He probably wouldn't have been as troubled had he been talking to the, a multitude. It would hurt me Badly, if I was speaking to my board and said to the board of directors, one of you have lifted up your soul against me. If I was talking to the top elders of the church, my first, my second, my third, if I was talking to the Episcopal adjutant and the jurisdictional adjutant and the Oh my, our armor bearers, and I had to say to them, one of you have lifted up your soul against me. That would trouble me. I'm pretty certain in this congregation, some of you have lifted up your soul. Just do the math. You know, not everybody, people, people buy in at certain levels and at certain times, some people don't buy in at all. You wonder why they're still coming to the church. But in a close-knit situation, you're amongst your inner circle. It's a painful thing to say, one of you, am I preaching good, have lifted up your soul against me. In verse 21, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. They're in the upper room. Jesus and the twelve. And when he said that, I tell you who was surprised to hear it, the twelve. They were stunned. They were shocked. Then said his disciples, then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. All of them were looking around. So what's he talking about? Not us. No way. Mm -mm. This can't be. Even the one who was guilty said, what? 
No way. Hypocrites are something. Judas walked like the disciples walked. Talked like they talked. He was there when Jesus walked on water. He was there when Jesus healed the sick. He was there when Jesus performed his miracles. He said hallelujah also. He acted just like them. As a matter of fact, not one of the disciples ever suspected that Judas was a thief. They walked together, traveled together, talked together. The man did a great job disguising it. You would never know that his heart wasn't right. So they were stunned. Are y'all following me? My friends who are streaming, y'all bear with the preacher. Yes, and they were stunned that our Lord would say such a thing. And then uh, verse 23 says, Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. John, the writer of the book, was referring to himself. Remember when they were in there, remember in biblical times, don't picture all of them sitting at a table. You know, you see the, the, the drawing of the Last Supper and they're all sitting at a table. That drawing is incorrect. They didn't have chairs. What they did when they ate, the food was in the middle like that. And they lie on pillows. And everybody's leaning in toward the food. Their feet extended this way, the food. So the disciples and everybody, they're in there, right? So John, positionally, he's the closest to Jesus. And he's resting on our Lord's chest. It was a very intimate setting. Simon Peter, therefore, beckoned him. That he should ask who should, who it should be whom he spake. Peter said to John, hey man, John, white, you're close to him. Ask him who is it. Who's the Negro <laughs> who is betraying Jesus? Now we know he's not lying. Because he's Jesus. He can't lie. But I just can't imagine. Because I know it ain't me. You know, big mouth Peter. Um, he then, lying on Jesus' breast, said unto him, Lord, who is it? They're in there. That's a hush. And then Jesus did something that if you understand what he did was one of the most remarkable acts of grace. I think uh, Dr. Foster recorded in scripture one of the most. The most is Jesus dying on the cross. But this is one of the most remarkable acts of grace in the Bible. John said, which one? Who is it? Jesus answered, he it is to whom I shall give a sop. Sop. A piece of bread. Sop. A morsel. What's the significance of it? To dine in a setting like that and to take a piece of bread and give it to any one person in that kind of setting was considered in biblical times to be an act of supreme honor. And it said, you are my 
special friend. I have a special love for you. That was Jesus' way of saying to Judas, please change your plan. Judas, I love you, man. Judas, don't do this, dog. Stop right now. Judas, leave it alone. You know, that'll preach. Just take the sob. Leave that woman alone. Take the sob. Leave that man's wife alone. Stop selling them drugs. Praise the Lord. Stop cheating. Just take the sop. I'm giving you an opportunity. And if you take it, your life will be so much different. But if you don't take this, your life will never again be the same. Judas' heart was so hard. Because remember now, there's only two men who knew what was really going on in there at the time. Jesus and Judas. Judas' heart was so far gone that he rebuffed our Lord's effort. Now the Lord said, if you didn't see me heal the sick, raise the dead, walk on water, feed 5,000. When you need tax money, I said, go in the fish's mouth. No one ever died in my presence. It's been a three-year run. Everything you needed, you found in me. I was a walking grocery store, clothing store, whatever you needed. You know I'm who I am. You've seen me. I've given you so many, so many reasons to believe on me, to trust me, to serve me. And you know what? I'm giving you one more chance. Take the side. Abandon those evil plans. Judas didn't do it. And then something happened to Judas that you don't see often in scripture. I'm going to preach in a minute. The Bible says that Satan entered into him. It didn't say a demon or a devil or an evil spirit or Beelzebub. But Satan, Satan himself entered into Judas. See, you don't know what's on the other side of our Lord offering you the sop. See, young girl, you just gonna rebel anyway, right? You you just you just got the hearts for that for the for, for the street guy. Brother, you don't want Jesus. You don't want church. You just, you just, you just, you know, you just, you just want that other life. And your mama's praying for you. Your daddy's praying for you. The saints are praying for you. Everybody's saying, do right, do right. You never know when the sock has been offered for the last time. And when he turned it down, Lucifer himself stepped in and notice Jesus's response to Satan entering into him Jesus didn't try to win Judas Jesus didn't plead with Judas Jesus didn't say hey man you better think about it no Jesus says that which thou doest do quickly 
it's over. You went too far. It's over. Judas is burning in hell right now. Accept God's grace. The Lord said, I don't want to blow you up. I don't want to take you down. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to put you in jail. I don't want to make you sick. I don't want to kill you. I don't want to stomp you. I don't want to destroy you. I want to bless you. Why not quit while you're ahead? Why push the envelope? Look at your neighbor and say, take the side. That's good preaching. That's good preaching right there. Notice this. The disciples still didn't know what was going on. They thought when Jesus said, that which thou do, do quickly. They thought Jesus sent him to buy some supplies or maybe to go and give money to the poor. And notice verse 30. You remember I told you to pay attention when they went in. It was evening, right? Notice verse 30 says, he then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Judas's soul was in darkness, and his soul now was as dark as the night. And John points out that it was night. He's lost. He's going to betray the Lord to finish the betrayal. But notice what Jesus said after Judas left. Jesus' response in verse 31 says, Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified. And God is glorified in him. Remember today, things are not always what they seem. Judas went out to betray him. Jesus says, I'm in my finest hour. I'm glorified. One man wrote this, the instant Judas was gone, the atmosphere cleared, and Jesus began to instruct his disciples and to prepare them for his crucifixion and his ultimate return to heaven. It was after Judas' departure that our Lord instituted the Lord's Supper, something that Judas, an unbeliever, could not share. He didn't even talk about the Last Supper till Judas was gone. According to John uh, 13 and 27, as I forementioned, Satan had entered into him. Let's look at our text. I'm almost where I'm headed. Jesus said in verse 27 of our text, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give to you. Amen. And I didn't omit 26. I'm just starting here. Because he's talking about the Holy Ghost. And God knows we need the Holy Ghost. But when, when the comforter, the paracletes, our lawyer, which is the Holy Ghost. You know, some people like to say Holy Spirit. King James says, which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name. Look at this. He shall teach you all things. That is, he will increase your understanding. Well, elder, a lot of people don't have the Holy Ghost because they don't seem to understand. We don't know who the enemy is anymore. There are churches who preach against preachers who preach against sin. They're just so judgmental over there. But what are you? You need to ask God to increase your understanding. In, these, in times like these, we need our understandings enlightened. We need to know that the Bible is right. And Jesus says, I'll bring to your remembrance all things whatsoever I have said unto you. My peace, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. The world's peace depend on, depends on its resources. While God's peace depends on relationships. To be right with God means to enjoy God's peace. The world depends on a person's ability, world's peace. But the Christian depends on the spiritual adequacy of Christ. 
Paul said in Second uh, Corinthians uh, chapter number 3. Powerful passage of scripture. He says in chapter 3 verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. But our sufficiency is of God. We are sufficient. We have more than enough to deal with whatever life throws at us if we stay in Christ. In the world, peace is something you hope for and work for. But in Christ, peace is God's wonderful gift received by faith. The Bible said that there is a peace which passeth all understanding. God's peace can be upon you and you don't even know why you're at peace. Trouble everywhere. The world is going crazy. Sickness in the family. Sickness in your body. Money funny. Change strange. And yet you're at peace. That's because you know that the Lord has your back. Amen. Jesus was troubled. But he understood that uh, it was his hour. It was his time. He says for this cause came I into the world. The peace that he is speaking of is a calmness of confidence in God. Jesus had his peace because he was sure of the Father's love and of the Father's approval. So he says in our text, chapter 14 and verse 27, the B clause, he says, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Notice what he does. He, all, he opens this uh, particular chapter in verse 1 saying the same thing. Let not your heart be troubled. I guess uh, 27 verses later, they were still sitting there troubled. Regardless of what he said, they were troubled. And I understand why they were troubled. He, was, he, t- he, was telling, he had told them, I'm leaving you. I'm leaving you. I'm getting ready to die. Not only that, but uh, I'm going back to my father. He's telling them, the ride is over, as you know it. And you have to, give, you have to think about what they saw for the last three years. What they experienced walking with Jesus. Oh my, the attention, the power, the danger, the hard work, the pace. All that they had witnessed. And Christ now telling them, this part of it is over. It troubled their heart. But then Jesus reminded them in verse 28, he says, you have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I'm going to my father and my father is greater than I. He said to the guys, come on fellas, be glad for me. I'm going home. I'm going where I was before. Paul said, Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Before he came to the planet in the first place, in the form of a baby, Jesus was in glory with the Father. Amen. And he, he, when he came in the flesh, that's called his incarnation. Praise the Lord. But before he was incarnated, into the flesh Jesus always existed God said in Genesis early let us make man in our image the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6 God said whom shall I send and who will go for us so there have never been a time when Jesus didn't exist and Jesus said I'm going back to my father and, and they said, Lord, we don't want you to go. But Jesus told them, I will not leave you comfortless. In verse 16, he said, I will pray the Father. And he will give you another comforter. And that, that he may abide with you forever. I got to leave you for a while. But this other comforter will abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because they see him not, neither know him, but you know him. And uh, look at this, for he dwelleth with you 
and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I won't leave you like an orphan. I will come unto you. He says, I've already told you that when I leave, I'm going to give you uh, someone to replace you. Be glad for me. I'm headed somewhere. Then he said in verse uh, 29, and I want you to get verse 29. I want you to get verse 29 because uh, if you miss this, you'll miss my point. This powerful admonition, things are not always what they seem. He said in verse 29, and now I have told you, uh huh, before it come to pass, I've told you that when it come to pass, you might believe. I've told you that I'm leaving. Amen. That you might believe. Now the disciples, saints, had already professed their belief in Jesus. John 1 and 50 says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? That was Jesus talking to Nathaniel. John chapter 2 verse 11. This is the beginning of the miracles this beginning of the miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. John chapter 6 and verse 69. And they said to him, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, son of the living God. So since they had already professed their faith, by now, Peter had already said, you're the son of the living God. They had already believed on him. Then what is he talking about in verse 29? When he says, and now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it come to pass, that you might believe. Oh, the point he's making is that things are not always what they seem. His point is, you're about to see some things that's going to shake the foundation of your faith. Your faith's foundation will be shaken. They are about to see some things that can turn their faith in Jesus upside down. For almost the last three years, Jesus had been large and in charge. He had every answer. He was never stumped. He was in total control. He never lost a debate. Praise the Lord. No one ever died in his presence. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He gave sight to the blind. Fed 5,000 with two little fish and five barley loaves. Oh my, he was the man. It took men who were young boys and basically unknown and took them to heights that they could never imagine. Just by following him. There was glory in the way he walked. There was glory in the way he talked. There was love in the way he looked at them. He preached with authority. Not like the scribes. There was nobody like Jesus. Nobody. Praise God. Something about the way he moved his hands. And when he touched things. Things changed. The good God almighty. Blind eyes came open. Cripples began to walk. Yes, yes, and they were there. And they saw that they were on the Mount of Transfiguration and they saw him when he shined like the sun. Oh, they were there when John the Baptist baptized him and they saw the dove fly from him. Can I get a witness? God the Father spoke and said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And they were there when Jesus on the Mount of Transfig Transfiguration, Peter spoke up and said, should we build three temples, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for thee? And God said, this is my beloved son. Shut up, Peter, and hear ye him. Peter was there when Jesus walked on the water. All of them was on the boat. Peter said, if it's you, bid me to come. Jesus said, come. And Peter walked on the water. So they believed. They had faith. But you're about to see some things now, Jesus is saying, that will shake your foundation. Upper room, 
People wasn't ready for COVID. People wasn't ready to close churches. Pastors panicked. First ladies panicked. Organizations panicked. When people started to die and folk got afraid, their foundations were shaken. People, people weren't prepared for men to actually, praise the Lord, get their sex organs cut off. Trying to be a woman and women having their perfectly healthy breasts removed, trying to be men. Folk hadn't been prepared for the things that we're seeing now. Seeing it endorsed from no less than the President of the United States as they uh, endorse Drag Queen Day. The women, even the feminists now, are mad at Nike. Praise the Lord, they ought to be, because Nike, he angered the feminists by choosing a, a trans influencer. Nike went with a man, Dylan Mulvaney. Dylan is a man. They, they say a trans woman is a man, that's a lie. A trans woman is a woman, that's a lie. A trans woman is a man. Because if it wasn't a man, you wouldn't have to call it a trans woman. That's a man. That's a man. Influencer Dylan Mulvaney as the new face of its women's sports bra. So now look at what's going on and folk are wondering what in the world is happening in this world. Jesus was saying to them, you're going to see some things. You're going to see some things with your eyes that your mind won't be able to handle. You're going to hear some things with your ears that you've never heard before. And if you're not careful, the things you hear and the things you see will shake you. But you got to remember that I told you things are not always as they seem. Yes, sir, I feel the Holy Ghost. Jesus was preparing them for the strain. El Chuku and others as we fight these cultural battles. There's a strain that will come on us as a result of the crisis. It ain't fun. It ain't, ain't nobody. It ain't fun when you see people throwing off on you. It's not fun when you read some nasty comments online. And I'll tell you what's worse than all of it. The indifference of your friends. Oh, the criticism of your critics don't surprise you. But that eerie silence that come from the men of God. That eerie silence that come from folk who supposed to believe the same thing you believe if you don't remember what Jesus said these things will shake your foundation but if you remember what Jesus said you'll have an unshakable foundation you'll be able to go through and stand the storm Jesus said there's a crisis coming you're gonna see things that will shake you but remember that all things not everything is as it seems Good God Almighty. The Bible declares in 2 Timothy 2 and 18, talked about how those false teachers will overthrow the faith of some. You ought to purpose in your heart that you ain't gonna let anything or anybody overthrow your faith. You know what the Bible says. You know what God said and God hadn't changed his mind. Don't you let the Democrats make you change your mind just because they're the ones in, endorsing all this trans garbage. They're the ones endorsing all this LGBT mess. The devil is a liar. It's in their platform. You ought to be sanctified. And you tell them you got, you got an option. You can go Republican or you can join me in being independent. Don't you be a part of a wicked move like that because these people, this is, this is why so many black preachers won't preach against this stuff anymore because they're scared to offend the party. I don't care about anybody's party. I'm not, I've said all the time, nobody's hand is in my pocket. For God I'll live and for God I'll die. My good God Almighty, I got a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And I'm asking God to keep me and give me strength to cry loud and spare not and keep on believing. And I'm, I've learned that thing.
things are not always what they appear. And our, uh, as I see here, the scripture says in Galatians 5 and 7, you did run well. Who did hinder you? Saints, don't let them slow you down. Don't let them hinder you. Keep coming to church. Keep praising the Lord. Keep praying and fasting. Keep uh, singing the songs of Zion. Keep saying, for God I'll live. And for God I'll die. Keep standing for holiness. Keep standing for righteousness. Stand against racism. Stand against wokeism. Stand against pervertism. Stand against, oh God, idolatry, adultery. Stand. Oh, stand on the word of God. Can I get a witness? Let me hear you say yes. Hallelujah. Stand. Regardless what your eyes tell you. Stand. Regardless to what your heart tells you. Stand. Regardless to how you feel. Stand. Regardless to what it looks like. You got to keep the faith. Jesus knew that they had believed. The point he was making is you got to keep on believing because you're going to see some things that if you let it, it'll stop you from believing. But when the devil try to shake your faith, just remember, no matter how frightening it is, no matter how hard it looks, no matter how dire it appears to be, things are not always as they seem. Say yeah! Oh, yeah! Somebody praise the Lord in here. Tell your neighbor you can't always trust your eyes. See, I, Elijah's eyes, his eyes betrayed him. He ran and said, Lord, I'm the only one left. God said, that ain't true. I got 7,000 who have not bowed to Baal. Don't you let the devil fool you and make you think you're alone. You're never alone. Because Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Peter said, the same affliction that's taking place in you is taking place in your brethren that are in the world. Somebody ought to shout and say, I'm on the Lord's side. I may suffer some things. It may not look good, but I'm on the Lord's side. Jesus told them, you're going to see some things that you got to believe through. You've, you've been accustomed to seeing me large and in charge. You've been accustomed to seeing me strong and mighty. You've been accustomed to seeing me solve every problem. Well, things are going to change. You're going to see me arrested. You're going to see me tried and found guilty. You're going to see me beaten with my black, my back is bloody. You're going to see me blindfolded and slapped. You're going to see me spit upon. You're going to see me lied on. You're going to see me carried across. You're going to see them try nails in my hand. You're going to see them try nails in my feet. You're going to see me hang my head and die. You're going to see me carried across. You're going to see me stumble. You're going to see that brother, Simon of Serene, help me carry the cross. You're going to wonder, where's my power? You're going to wonder, has the devil got stronger than I am? Is the devil stronger than me? Because it looks like he's in charge. But remember what I've told you. Things are not always what they seem. Say it! Say Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. You ain't 
ain't gonna get no COVID. Shake somebody's hand and say, it's not what it looks like. It may look bad. It may look shaky. You may seem, may seem like you're going down, but hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Keep on believing. Keep on praying. Keep on standing. Oh, hold on. Somebody shout right there. Jesus said, Jesus said, he said the prince, he said I can't talk to you now. I can't talk about this much anymore because the prince of the world, the prince of the world is coming and he has nothing in me. In other words, devil is going to look like He's stronger than I am. In that the, in that times where it seemed like the devil is in charge, there are times when it seemed like Satan's on the rampage. Every morning when you get up, there's another shooting, there's another killing, there's another stabbing. Drugs everywhere. The border is open. The news is bad. It seemed like. Satan's in charge, but I want to tell you that Jesus is in charge. Jesus said the prince of the world has come, but he has nothing in me. That is, he has no legal claim over me. He has nothing on me. There's no flaw in me. There's no action that I've ever taken that he can use against me. There are no shortcomings on my part. No lie that I've ever told. No act of disobedience. He has no power. I've defeated him many times. I beat him after I fasted 40 days and 40 nights. I beat him when I cast the devil out and they said it was by Beelzebub I defeated him because I said no man can enter a man's house until he bind the strong man I've defeated him many times but this time it's going to look like he defeated me but things are not always as they seem you just remember what I told you. You remember what I said. No matter how bad it looks, no matter how bad it gets, keep on shouting, keep on believing, keep on standing, keep living holy, keep serving God, keep preaching. Somebody by the hand of time, keep on, keep on. nothing on me he don't have more power than I have I've already defeated him well why why are you going through why why are you suffering these things why he tells us why he said because I love my father and my father has given me a commandment and I love you so I am I'm going through the motions. I'm going to act like I can't get free. I'm going to act like I can't call on 12 legions of angels to come and get me off this cross. I'm going to act like the crucifixion is going to kill me. I'm going to act like I can't wave my hand and 500 of them fall dead. I'm going to go through because I love you. But just remember, 
it's not what it seems. And God told me to tell you, especially those of you who are going through, it's not what it seems. You're not going down. You're being glorified. You're not going down. You're being lifted up. You're not going down. Just see it through. Just keep living holy. Just keep living right. Just wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Say, yeah. Say, yeah. When you're in the throes of a thing, whether it's a diagnosis, they found cancer in your body, your mama's sick, your dad is sick, your money is funny, your change is strange, oh, the devil go to talking, and say, why you? And the devil will tell you going down, and all that stuff, all that stuff, I call it Satan's uh, what about this isms. What about this? And what about that? And he knows how to just keep bringing stuff to your mind. You tell the devil, I've given it all to Jesus. And we walk by faith and not by sight. I know in whom I believe. And I know my Redeemer liveth. And I know that he's able. Somebody shout, able. Oh, he's able. Ah, he's able. And he's got power, power, power. None can stop him. The devil can't stop him. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. You ain't got nothing on my Savior. Satan, my Savior is sinless. My Savior never lied. My Savior never fell short. My Savior did everything right. My Savior always obeyed my Father. And guess what? We're covered in his blood. That means unless we permit him to, He's got no claim on us either because we're covered in the blood of Jesus. Good God Almighty. And every time the devil tried to accuse us before God, Jesus says, yes, but they're covered in my blood. Yes, but they're my children. Yes, but they belong to me. I'm glad today that I belong to Jesus. I want you to help me, I'm done. I think it came together. I want you to help me. Uh-huh. Help me preach. Just find somebody. Preferably somebody that you didn't come to church with. And just tell them, don't trust your sight. It's not what it looks like. Good God Almighty. It's not as it seems. It's not as bad as that. Just keep on believing. Keep on clapping your hand. Keep on serving the Lord. Keep on keeping on. Oh, Lord, help me to keep on keeping on. Oh, sometimes the Lord gets heavy. Sometimes the hills are hard to climb. Oh, Lord, sometimes the rain just keep on falling. Oh, Lord, but I'm glad today that I know that if I trust in the Lord, if I hold his hand, I wait on him 
If I wait on the Lord and be of good courage, He will strengthen my heart. Last thing I want to tell you is I had fainted except I believe. I kept on believing. Do I have a witness in here who can say I kept on? The road got rough. The way got hard. But I kept on believing that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Didn't he come through for you? If you're here and I'm talking to you, would you praise him right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Satan, you were never stronger than Jesus. You were never stronger than Jesus. You never manhandled Jesus. You never took him anywhere that he didn't decide to go. The Bible says that he became obedient even to death, even the death of the cross. I tell you what, Death had to do, death had to ask Jesus, uh, are you going to let me kill you? Because death couldn't kill him. No one ever died in his presence. And he did it for you and me. Good God Almighty. Somebody's going through some things. And things ain't looking good for you right now in your life. I want to tell you to hold on because things are not always what they seem. If I'm talking to you, meet me at the altar. I want to pray for you. God Almighty, oh Lord, there's a brighter day coming. Oh Lord, go ahead Drop the nails in my hand Laugh at me Where you stand Go ahead And say it isn't me But the day Oh, Lord, I'll ride. 
process maybe ugly right now but the sun's gonna shine again hallelujah thank you Jesus see it through it didn't look good for Joseph but he ended up where God said it would be he was gonna do it for you the Lord told me to tell you Satan has no legal claim to hold you down live right take the stop do what's right I'll empower you. I'll use you. Don't trust your eyes. We walk by faith and not by sight. Don't trust your eyes. Don't trust your ears. Trust the word. Trust what the Lord has said to you. We trust what he's told us. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, we collect ourselves around the altar. Your God. And there's nobody like you. You're God. And you're mighty. Satan has no power over you. None. You're the one who is strong and mighty. And mighty in battle. You're the lifter of our head. You're the keeper. Glory to God. Glory to God. And Lord, we trust you more than we trust the voice of reason. We trust you more than we trust the enemy. We trust you more than we trust the government. We trust you more than we trust man. We trust you, Lord, more than we trust any political party. We trust you in the name of Jesus. You're a mighty God. Somebody's getting it right now. Somebody's getting it right now. Oh God. Oh God. Thank you, Jesus. You're mighty God. And we give you all of the glory. We give you all of the praise. We thank you right now for things are not always the way that they seem. But I'm going to see it before I see it. I'm going to see it by faith. I see myself out of this situation i see myself healed i see myself delivered i 
see myself set free. I see myself strong. I see myself blessed. I see myself sanctified. I see myself strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I see myself in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You can praise the Lord as you make your way to your seat. I believe I'll run on and see what the end is going to be. You know, somebody said, and we almost stopped singing the song. Well, we already know what the end is going to be. We read the Bible. Yeah, but that song is not always talking about the end of time. Sometimes you're going through some things. And you got to keep running. Oh, let me run on. See what the end is going to be. Lord, I run on. See what the end is gonna be. Satan wants me to stop preaching. Satan wants me to get silent. Satan wants us to leave these important subjects alone. But Lord, let me run on to see what the end gonna be.
serve the Lord. Go keep on serving him. John, you got to keep on standing. Keep on preaching. The rest of you prayer warriors in here, keep praying. Every time you get a chance, we're going to get through this thing. Over there. I believe I'll run on, see what the end's going to be. I believe I'll run on. Yes, sir. See what 
glory. Woo! I believe somebody's got a mind to run on. Plane to catch this evening. Man, get started. Oh God. How many believe God? And believe that we can win and we're winning. Amen. Somebody asked me, said, man, a preacher called me one time. He was hurt. And he said to me, he said, man, I just feel like we're losing. I feel like we're going through. I feel like the church is losing. I feel like we're losing the battle. And I said, no, sir. Things are exactly the way Jesus said they would be. That means we're winning. Jesus said there will come a falling away. Jesus said that. Paul said that. Jesus said there will be false Christ. Jesus predicted the day there will be commotions. Things will be upside down, inside out. But if we hold on, I heard him say, but he that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. See, you got to, you got to hold on. Let's bless the Lord by the way of giving. Hallelujah. Oh my. Keeping my lamps on trim and my fire burning bright so I can leave this old sinful world. If Jesus comes tonight, I don't want to be left behind in this sinful and mean place. That's why I'm watching and waiting, seeking the Lord and running and making haste. I know he's coming back. I know he's coming back. I don't want to stay here. I don't want to stay here. He said he's coming back. He said he's coming back. Father, we bring our gifts to you. We bring our offerings. We bring our tithe and we give them to you. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. People everywhere are falling in love with this old mean world. It's riches of diamonds and silver and gold. Forgetting about their souls But as for me and mine We're gonna see the King I'm in love with the Lord Jesus Christ You can have this world's everything When the seal's trumpet sound And the dead rise from the ground I don't want to be for your giving. Glory to God. Thank you. Did the word of the Lord bless you today? Now listen. This coming Wednesday at 9.30 prayer starts. Upper Room, the 7th Annual Ministers and Workers Meeting will convene right here. And I'm so excited about it. Today, Pamela and I, we're going to catch a flight this afternoon, this evening. We're going to Memphis, Tennessee. They moved the convocation this year because of Easter, the workers' meeting, I mean. And they moved it on our normal week. I've already talked to the presiding bishop and let him know we will be there Monday night and Tuesday. And then we're coming back Tuesday evening 
to be in place here because as a prelate, I can't be absent from my own meeting. The supervisor will be here as well. And all of our national officials, either you'll go out and do what we're doing or you'll be here. You won't be at the meeting because the meeting was moved on our date. I said, well, could you, couldn't you have moved your meeting? The only week that was open was the same week of Greater North Carolina. And I got too much respect for my spiritual father and for dad to do that. And I've already talked to the presiding bishop, and he's with it 100%. And he understands, because uh, most prelates wouldn't show up at all, because it's on the week of that meeting. But we're going out tomorrow, today, and we'll be there uh, for a banquet Monday night and go by the General Assembly. But I'm excited about what is going to take place here. Upper room? Upper room? People are watching us. It seems like to me God always keeps us in the spotlight. Um, I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't want to be the sweet little church that everybody just loves. Amen. That's not God. There is an offense to the gospel. Amen preach the truth and you stand and they're going to get mad. Always remember anytime you stand for something, you're standing against something else. And you have to decide what's priority. So we're going to be here Wednesday at 9. We have special guests Wednesday night, Bishop Michael Payton. He's an awesome man of God. He's a saved man of God. You saw it announced it's going to be a fantastic week, but I want us to start out right. Upper room, I'm depending on you to be in place. The jurisdiction is coming, but I want the members that I pastor to be here Wednesday morning. And if, you, if you're working, we understand that. But Wednesday night, we want to get off to a fantastic start. Remember, we only have our workers meeting and convocation for three nights. If you miss one night, you missed a third of the meeting. If you miss two nights, you miss two thirds. If you miss three, you miss the whole meeting. We go three nights so that pastors can have time to pastor their churches. You have never let me down before, so I look forward to seeing you when we return on um, Wednesday morning. We're going to have some powerful discussions. There are four must-haves that I will be teaching on uh, during the Wednesday day session and the Friday day session. Mother Beverly DeJanae will be doing Women's Day all day on Thursdays. Mother's going to bless us Thursday during the day. And Mother Thelma Butts will be here to bless us Thursday night. Also, on Thursday during the morning, we're going to have our men's gathering. And we have a strong, powerful men's ministry in North Carolina 3rd headed by my second assistant, Elder Anthony Wilson. At six o'clock in the afternoon, we will have our elders council, head, that's on Thursday, led by the chairman of our council, Elder Superintendent William H. Cooper II. Wednesday morning, our own Elder Robinson will be doing a teaching on church and the saints working together. You remember during our leadership conference, he did that powerful presentation. I want him to do it again. I want the jurisdiction to hear it. I think it's going to bless us and bless him. And on Friday during the day, the Elder Burnside from down in South Carolina will be our speaker. And then we're going to go back into our discussions. It will be, uh, I will teach a while and we will open the floor and entertain whatever questions and things you may have. And then we will come back Friday night and, uh, and preach the closing message. It's going to be a busy week. I, I really need you to pray for me. Pray that God give me the strength and the wisdom to do what I have to do. And... Um, Pray for traveling mercies that the Lord will bless us, you know. We make these plans, but if God don't take care of you, none of that happens. And then um, uh, I want you to 
do up a room as you've always done. You never have let me down. And um, we look forward to the saints being in place. People are watching us. People are watching us. People are watching us. I found out when Sister Douglas got back from Paris, they're watching us over there. People are watching us. Everywhere I go, people are telling me we're watching. And they keep saying this in our clothes. They keep saying this to me. And I hear fear. I hear fear. They say, please don't stop preaching the way that you preach. Please don't. And I think some are concerned that perhaps we will. Some are concerned that perhaps to, I don't know, maybe move up a ladder or something, we may at some point compromise God's truth. Um, uh, there is no ladder. Amen. Except the ladder that ascends and descends on Christ Jesus. Jesus said you will see angels descending, ascending and descending on the Son of Man. That's the only ladder I'm interested in moving up. I don't want anything that I got to compromise God and God's truth to get because it ain't worth having. Am I right about that? Amen. The word of God is right. Thank you for the offering. We've already blessed it. God bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you, our friends, for watching. Thank God for every visitor. I'm glad to see you all. And uh, yes, the food pantry has some produce available after church under the shed. And um, it's all free. And if you are interested, please stop by and get some. Amen. Did you get blessed today? Amen. The Bible is right in it. And God is speaking to us and I'm thankful. May we all stand. May we all stand. Amen. We're going to slip out the side door today and uh, get ready to uh, go where we got to go. And um, again, I'm proud of uh, the elder. And not just him. I remember when Elder Rayford made a stand right here. You know, it was all on the internet. Everybody, everybody's talking about us all on the internet. And I wasn't even here at that time. And these guys, uh, these perverts come and trying to take over the church. And that man of God right there stood his ground and didn't let it happen. And you know what I love, you know what I love about him? I love that he didn't say, well, I don't know what to do because the pastor's not here. You know what I've been saying? That's right. You know what I've been teaching? Then you go with what you know. And uh, I, I would rather for you the error on the side of standing too strong than the error on the side of not standing enough. But then I'm going to have to rebuke you, see? <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Let everybody say, God first. <laughs>